Okay, in this video, what I want to do is talk to you about the workflow of software applications that we're going to be using. And I'm going to kind of diagram this out for you to give you a clear idea of not only what we're using, but why we're using it and the various things that we'll be using each application for. And as we've already said, if you're following along with this course using different software packages, that's completely fine. Absolutely. But uh, this diagram and this discussion will hopefully give you an idea of the role that even your own software are going to play. That's right. So let's begin by starting off with the standard standard block, and by, sh by now I'm sure you guys really enjoy these block diagrams. If you don't really, you got to get used to them because they're great. All right, our first uh, application that I'm going to be using is Photoshop. Now, what are we going to be using Photoshop for? This is where we're going to take a look at all of our concept art. We're going to be bringing our image planes into Photoshop. Uh, we're going to be handling anything that has to do with uh, even our analog artwork. We're going to be scanning in and starting off here inside Photoshop. You might want to make tweaks. It's entirely possible you might want to colorize some of your uh, concept art. And colorization can be done, of course, with colored pencils or Crayola crayons or whatever you have on hand. I prefer Photoshop because mm -hmm. it's more fun. But uh, from there, though, this is where we jump into the actual 3D world of things, and we begin with our native 3D application. Now, if you're making a similar diagram, or maybe you're drafting one out in your head, yours might have a different application in it, but in this class, we're going to be assuming you're using Maya. So we're going to be going essentially from Photoshop into Maya, like so. And we're going to be also using a lot of ZBrush, and I'm going to put these two on the same level, because ZBrush and Maya are going to be heavily related, and they're going to kind of relate to each other in different ways based on uh, which model we're using and which technique we want to use. So let me go ahead and write ZBrush into this one. And we'll be going from Photoshop also into ZBrush as well as we uh, produce models directly from image planes inside of ZBrush, provided we use that technique. Now, in between Maya and ZBrush, there's going to be a lot of uh, interrelated work. We're going to be going from Maya back and forth to ZBrush in a lot of cases. You'll maybe start out with a base mesh from Maya that you take into ZBrush and sculpt, or maybe start off in ZBrush with a Z-Sphere model that you tweak topology on in Maya, then go back into uh, ZBrush, whatever's easiest for you. Either way, there's going to be a lot of back and forth. Then when you go to texture in either one of these applications, there's still going to be a lot of work that's going to kind of tie back into Photoshop as well. So these three applications are going to have a lot of interrelated work amongst them. But, however, at some point, we're going to be done with all of this, and we're going to move on to dun -dun 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 -dun, our post-production applications. And we'll start off here with After Effects. And I'll just draw one arrow coming out of Maya, because really that's where this is all going to come out of. We're going to render out of Maya and start taking things over into After Effects. But it's entirely possible we may have some assets from Photoshop that we will need to use over in After Effects. You might need to create some sort of a mask or some other 2D element that's easier to produce over in Photoshop and bring it in as some sort of a document. I don't know. It's just uh, food for thought. This it's is a possibility. It's a possibility. Always make sure that you're aware of the possibilities. Now, uh, once we are done with all of our compositing, as we discussed in our big, long workflow video earlier, we will move on to our editing, and that is going to be done with Adobe Premiere Pro. So let's see if I can spell Premiere correctly. And it is Premiere Pro, and we'll just draw a little arrow going right out of After Effects into Premiere Pro. At this point, all of our compositing is done. We have a series of uh, individual cuts that have all been color adjusted, had all their effects layered in, and so on and so forth, and we're ready to start making our final edits. Now, along with our editing uh, system and what's going on inside it, we may also need some sort of, uh, again, 2D elements perhaps from Photoshop to use inside of Premiere, it's hard to say, but just be open to the possibility. It's, it's very likely. Yeah. So, I mean, you, even uh, it could be something as simple as, I don't know, bringing in some sort of a layer. I'm not sure. Yeah. But, but it's, uh, it's likely that we're going to need to do it. So, uh, also, though, we're going to be handling all of our sound effects. So, let's bring in another little app that will kind of sit here underneath Premiere. And this will be Sound Booth. And that's what we're going to be using to uh, help master all of our sound effects and get those ready to go in and get those edited into our uh, animation inside of Premiere. And with that, we are essentially finished, and we have our final movie.
Now, Zach, you want to spend just a minute and talk about versions of software that you'll be using? Now, uh, that's a really good point because I just assumed everybody already knew. But for Photoshop, we are going to be using uh, CS3. In fact, for all of our Adobe products, we're going to be using Creative Suite 3. Uh, for Maya, we're going to be using uh, 2008. Uh, for ZBrush, we're going to be using ZBrush 3.1. And, of course, uh, these are Adobe products, so these are all CS3. Now, if you have earlier versions, that shouldn't be a problem. I can't imagine where that's going to be a major issue. Uh, the only application on this list that I have that really has changed in, uh, in its more recent versions is ZBrush. Mm -hmm. But if you have three, you know, you can get the free upgrade to 3.1. I suggest you do it because the interface has changed a lot. If you're still using two, uh, essentially everything that I'll be using is still there on some level except some of the retopologization and stuff. Though, uh, if you don't have access to that, there are ways to work around. I mean, you can uh, maybe make a ZSphere model, take it over into Maya, and do your retopologization there, and then take that new model model over into uh, ZBrush and start sculpting on it. So there's workarounds. There's ways to deal with it. As for the Adobe uh, softwares, the biggest thing that's changed about those in general, I'm not knocking Adobe, they made a great new version, but the biggest thing is just a, a few tweaks with the user interface. They've uh, really cleaned up the UI and made them, a lot, made them all kind of flow and work together a lot better than they have in the past. Uh, as for Maya, it's still Maya. They've they got a couple of new features, and uh, some things have been sped up. They've added a few things here and there. But really, I don't think Maya is all that different than uh, all the way back to what? I think I cut my teeth on version 3. Yeah, it was way back in the yeah. day. But uh, anyway, so that is our entire, not only all of the, the software we're going to be using. I, I can't think of anything else that we're going to be using that I'm going to work in. Um, I think that's everything that we originally had on our list. But uh, this is a, a kind of an overview of how our workflow is going to relate to each one of these softwares. Now, again, if you have different uh, softwares, maybe instead of Photoshop, uh, you might be using, I don't know, uh, I'll just draw in some um, options. You could be using Painter. You could be using the GIMP. You could be using Corel Draw. I think Corel still makes that. I, I haven't used it in so long. Uh, for Maya, wow, you have so many options. I'm not even going to try to list them. Yeah, you uh, just say them. Max, you, you, of course. You could be using Max. You could be using XSI. You could theoretically follow along with Houdini if you knew your yeah, you, what you were doing in Houdini. You could be doing it in Blender if you have no money that you would like to invest at this time with a uh, 3D software package. Absolutely. For ZBrush, you could also be using uh, Mudbox. Though there are some features in uh, ZBrush that are specific to ZBrush, but sure. uh, I mean for that 3D sculpting effect, you do have Mudbox for that sort of thing. Um, After Effects, uh, you have Combustion, and uh, some of you who have actually bought Max, uh, I believe it in a lot of cases you can get it. Like student licenses come with Combustion. Mm -hmm. You uh, can also you. can also be using Houdini. You could be using Houdini, yeah. If you great use, compositor built in. Yeah, if you're using Houdini, then uh, you don't need to worry about it because you've already got a compositor in it. Uh, Premiere. I don't know what some alternatives for Premiere are to be on, to be honest with you. There there are several Avid ev editors out there, etc. But oh, that's true. You have the Avid suites. But Premiere is going to be the big thing. Here. I mean, if I mean, you, you could have like a video toaster. Yeah. You could have one of the Avid media systems. You could. I mean, there's a lot of different possibilities. But Premiere is going to do the trick. Here. If you were on a really really tight budget and didn't absolutely have to have the nonlinear editing portion of it, I mean, you could do editing work inside a virtual dub, but it'd be a pain. Yeah, you could. Uh, you could just. I mean, basically at that point, all you're really doing is just joining together your composites. You could use Combustion or even Houdini's compositor or After Effects itself in yeah. order to put everything together. Just to all your edits finalized, sure. But I mean, so there's a, a bunch of different approaches. And but sound booth, really, there's all sorts of things you can get for recording and editing. Uh, oh yeah, <laughs> uh, sounds. The, the list just goes on and on because the music industry is so huge. But yeah, that's a, once again just a roadmap to the softwares that are going to be used in this particular course. And I think with everything here, the exception of ZBrush, there are rather learning editions or 30-day trials so that you that's can. Right. You know, try your hand at these softwares while we're working along. Now, that's a really good point, too. If you are using the learning editions of certain softwares, please understand that they do not do import-export in a lot of cases, and that uh, if they render out to some file type that is usually restricted in some way instead of size, a lot of them have watermarks. There's no way I can get around that, and I do apologize for the inconvenience on your end, but I've I got to handle the class with these uh, higher-end softwares. That's right. So it's just the way it goes. All right, so with that, that is going to wrap up this look at the softwares that are going to be used in the production of Zach's Animated Short, and that concludes this video. Thanks a lot.